you know, this is another edition of Hustlers Kung Fu, where your real education begins. Today, we'll be talking about the rich people of Atlanta. The good life is expensive. One of the craziest things that ever happens, and I, I see it here on this YouTube channel, is whenever I talk about how rich people live, because I'm a rich person, I live in a wealthy neighborhood, I see this stuff firsthand. I have people who don't live in these type of neighborhoods, who don't have money, who want to argue with me about what's going on with people with money. Uh, the first thing is, there are not a lot of people with money. I know when you look at it, there's like 20 million millionaires around the world and 2,500, maybe 2,600 billionaires out of a population base of 7.6 billion people. That's not even 1%. That's not even 1%. Here's a fun fact. If you live in the United States of America, you're richer than 85% of the people in the world by just simply living here. Just to goes to show you that people with money are not all over the place. It may seem like it due to social media. It may seem like it due to Facebook. And once again, I have these arguments with folks who are not wealthy, who don't have any money. What brings this assumption that because if you have money or your kids are on drugs, you're cheating on your wife. Because one of the things I've seen and one of the words that comes really strong through this neighborhood is stability. And you don't have stability without abundance. One of the things is, and I did this on Disruptive Mail. I don't know if it's on the new channel, but I call it struggle love. This is one of the things that is so cancerous to attitudes, to people setting their lives up. Struggle love. You get with this man and you build him up and he builds you up and together y'all build something. Ideally, you want to have a situation where both people are in a good position and they take what they have and put that together. This is why doctors marry doctors. This is why engineers marry engineers. This is why lawyers marry lawyers. They know what's coming to the table. But struggle love and the acutements of struggle love like Cowie Leonard, he drives a truck even though he makes $25 million a year. Cowie Leonard got some whips. He's got some cars. I mean, one of the things that I find so interesting is people can't grasp how much money a million dollars is. If you were to get $5 million at the age of 25 and you were to spend a hundred K a year with no additional money coming in. That money would last you four decades. No, five, five decades. That money would last you 50 years, which you spend in a hundred K a year without giving any more money. And a lot of people don't understand how much money that is, but more importantly, the good life is expensive. And this is why you should be trying to start a business. This is why you should be trying to get more money. Because the thing is, or you should be trying to get a high paying job. These are the things you need to work on because you're not living in a neighborhood like this making $30,000 a year. You're not living in a neighborhood like this making $50,000 a year. You're not living in a neighborhood like this making eighty k a year. It ain't happening. And one of the things that you get with people in their fantasies, I call them rich folk 
fantasies is you don't know any rich people there are no rich people in your family or you may have an uncle who he's your uncle he's your blood relative but y'all really don't hang out together and you seem to know what his life's about from afar but you have no real intimacy with this man there is no real you don't know nothing nothing and it's amazing because you know typically birds of a feather flock together you know i've got a few people on facebook who seem to know all of these rich folks and we were having a conversation because the rich folks were telling them you know it's like you don't have to work that hard i'm home by 5 30 every day and i disagree with that assertion that assertion typically when you're building a business you're not home by 5 30 every day you're home late you're at work early you're grinding and once again this grind doesn't go on for decades if you're you know strategically hustling strategically hustling you have a game plan you have a blueprint you're operating on that game plan you're working on that blueprint so you're not going to be working that hard forever but for a good three to five years you're gonna bust and that's the thing that trips up people when they want the good life when they want to set up some stuff this is why all my dudes here i tell you to get yourself together before you meet big booty betty before you meet tammy from miami with the camis before you meet this chick that you be together so you can come in from a platform where if you meet this chick and y'all have kids everybody's good but one of the things that happens is due to the biological urge of a lot of men and the biological urges of women you got a bunch of poor people having kids they don't have a pot to piss in nor a window to throw it out of and they're having kids and kids cost money kids cost money and one of the things that people don't seem to grasp is there are long-term consequences for short-term actions long-term consequences for short-term actions you will have people who will have multiple kids like let's say sheila sheila has three kids by three different dudes and the three different dudes are low caliber dudes so she ain't getting any child support so sheila is out here struggling and what she is doing is transferring the struggle paradigm to those children she's transferring the struggle paradigm to those children they're gonna grow up with that blueprint i'm gonna tell you something that my mother told me and my mother was like sheila she actually my mother actually came from a middle class family my grandmother was a school teacher my grandmother had her degree my grandfather was a barber but unfortunately my grandfather from the way i've been able to piece it together suffered depression and he shot himself he killed himself and then this took my mother into a tailspin where she became as the term back in the day loose and she ended up having three different kids by three different men and one of the things that this did was give us the poor person blueprint and i remember i was having the conversation and this is what my, my mother never really talked to me about sex and she said well if you're out there and you get a girl pregnant just bring the baby home that was the talk and i remember i think i was 15 14 to 15 and i was like i was a really i was a smart little kid and i remember that's asinine that's what i, I didn't say it out loud because it was my mother I was like that's asinine why would i go out and get a kid and bring her back to this uh at one point 
when I began to realize just how poor we were, I wasn't happy with it. So I fixated it in my mind at a very early age that I wasn't going to be poor as an adult. Well, there was a few things that happened. I joined the military, which put me in upper middle, middle class. Well, put me in middle class. I was able to have money. I had no responsibilities. I was a young man with responsibilities because I was sending money home to my mother and the two other kids. And then because of the blueprint, because I, you know, I had in my mind that I wanted to be successful when I was at Fort McPherson, I was trying to start several different businesses and it didn't happen the way that I wanted because I didn't have the right information. I had exposure, but I didn't have the right information. And I was dating this girl and we dated like three years and then we got married and she wasn't what I thought she was. She actually was, you know, because she was super smart, but she had no discipline. She had no consistency. She would start jobs and quit jobs, start jobs and quit jobs and just create this paradigm of failure and misery. So that set me back about 12 years because I was a hard worker. I had one full-time job, one part-time job, and a PRN job. If you're in healthcare, I don't know if they call it that anymore, but if you could call them up, it's like, hey, you got some hours? And they're like, yeah, we got some hours. And you show up in there, and you go ahead and get this, these hours. So I was working all like a maniac, and I just wasn't getting ahead because I was wedded to this loser. I mean, put it bluntly, she was a loser. Even now... This woman is in her 50s. She's still living with folks. She doesn't live on her own. She, she's just a loser. So once I unwrapped myself from that situation, I began to become successful because I didn't have any baggage holding me down. And once again, children are not baggage. Children don't do anything. Children didn't ask to be here. So it wasn't the children. It was her. And I ended up in a boarding house and I ended up being there almost three years where I learned the lessons that I needed to learn to be successful, which is discipline, consistency and strategic hustle. Because, like I said, you know, when I was married, I was a hard worker, but I wasn't getting any richer. And I think this is why they recently took a survey of people who felt who were like, well, working hard is just not going to set you up for the future. And I believe that these people are working on a failure blueprint, which they inherited from their parents. Go to school, get a job, work, work, work. And, you know, one of the keys that I learned in the boarding house was that you had to have a strategic plan that wasn't normal. The normal way is to get a job, work a lot of hours, make more money. That's the normal way. I didn't do it the normal way. Let me tell you what I did. I actually created my own reference for a job that I felt that I could do. And I got you know, actually, I went to monster.com. I don't know if monster is still around. I don't see their advertisements, but that doesn't mean anything. I went on monster and I crafted five different resumes for five different jobs that I felt that I could do. And see, this is strategic hustling. I sat down. I had a concept and I had a plan and I executed. So I did all this in one day wrote up these five resumes, applied for these jobs that I felt I can do, and then I created my own reference. It worked. I remember to this day when my pager, because this was a long time ago, this is when, you know, cell phones were not ubiquitous. Um, my pager went off, and I called the voicemail, and it was them to check my references. And my, my situation was so shoddy that I had to go down the street, Cleveland Avenue, and get on a 
pay phone and call them back with traffic whipping all around. You only asked me two questions. Did he work there and would you hire him again? And that was their reference check. And I was like, wow. I thought it was more detailed than that. And that started the path of upward mobility. I went from rent a crate, then I went to panel systems, then I went to business environments. And literally 18 months, I got a serious education. I was making more money than I was ever making in my life. And then I be jumped on to starting my own business. And let me tell you how that started. And once again, the good life is expensive and the good life takes you operating on the correct blueprint. If you're operating on the legacy blueprint that was instilled into you by your parents, more than likely you're not going to be that successful. This is one of the reasons, like when they took that survey and a lot of people didn't think that hard work would get you ahead, was they didn't know the right type of hard work to execute. Once again, you know, like a long time ago, well, not that long ago, America was set up for white men. And if a white man did X, Y, and Z in the system, he was successful. So the system was set up for him to be successful. That changed. That's why Trump's president. Because white men are, the system doesn't operate just for white men anymore. Essentially, the system, if you have the right information, is set up for anybody to win. You could be a woman, you can win. You could be trans, you can win. You could be gay, you can win. You could be whatever and you can win if you have the right information and you're operating in the correct system. And this is a failure that many people really don't understand that they're working hard, but they're working hard in the wrong direction. They're working hard in areas that are not going to produce fruit. It's like going outside and digging a 10 foot deep ditch, but your goal was to climb the cherry tree. But you're digging the ditch. This is what many people do. Many people dig a ditch versus figuring out how to climb the tree. And this is where the strategy comes in. This is where the exposure, this is where the blueprint comes in. Because once I started operating on the correct blueprint, I became successful. And it wasn't go to school. It wasn't just work hard. It was having a strategic hustling mindset. I mean, how many of you have ever thought, and I instinctively knew that when people checked you out, they didn't check out the reference. I instinctively knew that. It's like, well, they're going to check me out, but they're not going to check out the reference. And that's how I got over. And that was my first lesson in strategic hustling. My first lesson in setting up a blueprint and executing in that blueprint. And this is something that's funny. And this is going to go along racial lines. When I would tell black people what I did, they was like, man, you lucky you didn't get caught. I would tell white people they thought it was clever. I remember I was dating this girl and I told her the whole story. And she says, wow, that was brilliant. So it it's very intriguing how people are instilled with these blueprints and legacy for failure. More than likely, if you're if you're the product of a single mother household, you were unwittingly groomed for failure. You will see this on Facebook, like little Jimmy just graduated with you know twenty five to a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt and no job. I mean, yeah, he graduated. That's that's wonderful, but he's got all his debt. That's the failure blueprint. These little kids around here in this neighborhood, their parents pay for their college. They come out of college clean. They come out of college with no debt. They come out of college connected. 
So it's a different blueprint. It's a different legacy. And this is why the good life is expensive. The good life has always been expensive. The, the finest homes, the finest cars, the finest education, the finest health care has always been expensive. And in the future, it will continue to be expensive. And what many people want is the good life to come down to where they are. They want the good life to somehow just drop to their level. This is why I am not a proponent of low income housing. I feel that this is America and people need to get the proper education, not going to university or college, but a proper hustling education where they can make the money to live wherever they want to live versus. And also another reason I don't believe in low income housing. I'm living in the million dollar penthouse and then they got some low income housing in the same building. Um, no, that ain't working for me. That ain't, that's not going to work. This is why people with money typically do not hang out with people who are broke. It's just an incongruency there. One of the things that so many people fail to understand, and this is the people who have these rich folks fantasies. Well, you know, he drives a truck. He lives in a regular house. Yeah, he's got millions of dollars, but he lives no differently than me. Psych. I'm here to tell you it is a difference. They eat different. They live in the house that's different. They drive a car that's different. They go to better doctors. They eat better food. It's different. And so many people, because they don't want to face the bitter truth that they're poor, that they're operating on a failure blueprint, that they're operating on bad information that they're operating in bad faith uh, many people just don't get that one of the things that you've got to understand is your legacy education there's formal education you know you go to first grade second grade then high middle school then high school then college and there's your legacy education this is the education that your parents give you this is the education that your community gives you. And this is why so many young men who live in poor neighborhoods are so down to sell drugs. That is the education that the community gave them. You sell drugs, you get money. And they're not getting different examples. They're not getting the blueprint that they need to be successful. So this is Glennon Cameron, your hustling godfather. Hopefully this message finds you well, and hopefully you will listen, and more importantly, versus listening, take action. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.